Hi fans of pointless videos. <laughs> and thank you to all that responded when I posted uh, his comments in the community. Go watch another video. <laughs> so this pointless video is artist that I really uh, respect and love, but they are not in my CD collection. So not even one single CD. And I've put them in order, but, you know, I love them all. Uh, and, you know, there, there's no reason why they're not in my CD collection. It's just there's so much music, isn't there? You're, you're never going to have everyone in your collection. But I will say, eight out, of, eight out of the ten artists I'm going to be mentioning have been in my vinyl collection or my early CD collection. At least one help. So number 10 is a fairly underknown band, unless you know them. They only released three albums in 1978, 1979, and 1980. I only had one of them, and the band is the only ones. And uh, they supported The Who in the summer, in their summer 1980 tour. Their lead singer, Peter Perrette, is it Perrette? Uh, sadly, he had heroin and crack addiction issues for a lot of years, but he's cleaned up and he released uh, solo albums in 2017 and 2019. I'd like to hear those too. Uh, yeah, but their, their biggest hit was Another Girl, Another Planet, which Blink-182 covered. Yeah, the album I had was their third, Baby's Got a Gun, from 1980. I absolutely love the album. I've wanted to get it on CD for quite a while, but it's kind of expensive to buy, hard to get. But I would, you know, I'd love to hear their whole discography, all three albums. And I'm going to make a playlist, which you should see at the end of this video or in the description, of uh, one of my favorite songs from each of these artists. And I'm calling it Classic Rock for the title, but it's not necessarily all classic rock. It's whatever you want to call it. Number nine, I've never had in my CD or vinyl collection, but I've always enjoyed every song I've heard by them. Killing Joke. Love Like Blood from 1985 is a favorite, and then War Dance, Requiem, and The Wait from their first album. And their bassist, Youth, of course, is pretty well known for collaborating with Paul McCartney in The Fireman. Uh, and they released three albums, and I have just one of them, Electric Arguments, but also Strawberries, Oceans, Ships, Forest, and Rushes, which I've never heard. Number eight. I've got a couple of female artists, believe it or not. I do like female artists. <laughs> Joni Friggin Mitchell. That's right, Joni Friggin Mitchell. Uh, I did have Cord and Spark on vinyl years ago, and I loved it. And I also had her, it's probably her least loved, or one of her least loved albums from 1985, Dog Eat Dog. But I loved it back in the 80s, and I think I would still love it today. And I've heard uh, The Hissing of Summer Lawns and Mingus, I believe I've heard. So yeah, I would love to have her, her full discography. What a talent. Warren Zevon. I had his album Excitable Boy on vinyl, and I even had it on CD, but it was an older version of it. I want to get a remap, like a newer version of it, because the one I had was from <laughs> probably when CDs first came out. Uh, yeah, Lawyers, Guns, and Money, Excitable Boy, Werewolves of London, of course, Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner, uh, but I haven't really heard any of his other albums, but I know he's a great talent, and his final album, of course, he knew he was going to be passing away, was The Wind in 2003. Uh, but I would definitely love to have his full discography. Now, this artist, I think most people have heard of, especially lately, <laughs> Kate Bush. Of course, Running Up That Hill is getting a real big reboot. Uh, she was always more popular in the UK than, you know, Canada and the States, but she was still, I, I would say, pretty, pretty well known. 
and Wuthering Heights, her first single, is just amazing, Hounds of Love. And Russell Mail of Sparks is a fan. I think both brothers are. And uh, he's not just jumping on the bandwagon because of her, re her new popularity, but this was recently posted on, uh, on a site where musicians were talking about Kate Bush. And by the way, Sparks are, re are recording a new album right now. Here's a picture. <laughs> so he says about Kate Bush, literate, just like me, sophisticated, not fitting in, no, oh, that's me. Musically challenging, yet not proclaiming that you are musically challenging. Well, if you've heard my music, it is musically challenging. <laughs> uh, not being part of a movement, creating your own movement, much like me. Not part of a past musical model, not me. Establishing, <laughs> establishing your own world, staying true to that world. Not writing material that sounds like you are desperate for a hit, but having hits nonetheless. Kind of like Sparks. And establishing your own voice, literally and figuratively. And having integrity at any cost. I like that. Number five, not in my CD collection, but I had them on vinyl, and I've got the lead singer, uh, his early albums on uh, a 3D C three CD set. The Faces, that's right. And the, the vinyl record I had is A Nod is As Good as a Wink to a Blind Horse. I absolutely love that album. And, you know, Stay With Me, Debris, Debris you're So Rude, Miss Judy's Farm, Memphis, and then uh, Ooh La La, their next album, and the song Ooh La La with uh, lead vocals by Ronnie Lane, not Rod Stewart. It's such a great song. But going back to, uh, to A Nod Is As Good As A Wink To A Blind Horse, the slide guitar in that album is just so good by, by Ronnie Wood. So good by Ronnie Wood. I'm a poet, and I don't even know I am. Number four, Black Oak, Arkansas. I was in the early 70s. You know, there's Grand Funk Railroad I was a huge fan of. Uh, Led Zeppelin, of course. Creedence Clearwater Revival. Uriah Heep. And Black Oak, Arkansas. But I wasn't a big fan for long, because <laughs> after uh, their album High on the Hawk, their, their next release, which was Street Party, was kind of a disappointment to me, and I kind of stopped buying their albums after a couple more. Although X-Rated, from 1975, was pretty good. And, of course, their live album, uh, Raunch and Roll, with uh, the great song Up and Hot and Nasty, not the Humble Pie song. But, yeah, I would enjoy their whole discography. Yep, Black Oak Arkansas. So they are in my playlist if you've never heard of them. Check it out. Number three, I've recently done a video on. I, I've got a new admiration for this band, seen some live clips of them and going back and hearing some of their albums. And I actually have three of them on the way. The band is Midnight Oil, and I, I'm getting a, a CD that contains three of their albums. 10987654321, Red Sails in the Sunset, and a Place Without a Postcard, which I've never heard. And yeah, they are just such a friggin' good band, really overlooked, and I just love them. I'd love to have their whole discography. Number two, I'm ashamed to say, is not in my CD collection. But I've had him on vinyl, and I did at one point have some of his CDs, but that was years and years ago. But it is Paul Friggin Simon. Uh, yeah, his debut album, My Love, still crazy after all these years. Graceland, of course. There goes Ryman Simon. Uh, just one of the one of the greatest songwriters ever. 
Someday I'd like to do a, a video of my top ten lyric writers. And I think he would be on the list. <laughs> Number one, and I do, I am planning to buy their box set. It has all of their remastered albums and lots of other goodies in it. The Clash. I've had them on vinyl and I had them on CD, but uh, recently I've been listening to their second album, G Give Them Enough Rope. And I used to think it was just a, an okay album. It was kind of a disappointment after they, their debut. But listening to it with fresh ears, it is great. And I also love Sandinista. It's actually my favorite album. I know most people <laughs> would choose London Calling, which is a great album too. But I find... Uh, I get... Uh, London Calling is so good that you kind of get it after like three or four lessons and you don't really need to listen to it much anymore. Even after all these years, I, you know, I'm not in a hurry to listen to it again, even though I know it's great. But with Sandinista, it's, it's not perfect. It's, you know, there's some filler in it and all that, but I just love the, the variety of the songs in it. And, you know, the only song of theirs I dislike is their big hit, Rock the Caspa. I don't know, I just have never really liked that song. But, you know, Garage Land, Straight to Hell, uh, London Calling, the song. Just a great band, one of the best. So that's it. That's my top ten artists or classic rock artists or whatever you want to call it that are not in my CD collection, but I'm going to work on. And so I would love to know in the comments section below what bands or solo artists you really love, but they, you don't have any of their stuff in your CD or vinyl collection yet. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And I, I hope I didn't bore you with this pointless video.